Okay. Um, hi there. I'm going to be talking about now, um, which I have to move this over here because it's just a little bit distracting. Sorry about that. But um, I'm going to be talking about the past few months of my own life, okay? And the things that were happening in that. Okay. Everything really started in January. Okay. I was in a group of fellowship with Brad Ovenshine, Alexander Hartley, Matthew Melanson, Matthew Landau, and a Justin Laird. Okay. And in this fellowship, in these fellowships, we were all having great times to begin with, and we were going and right deep into the studies, and it was it was great to begin with. But things started happening. Really strange things like literally. Most of all, I'm going to mention names here because I have to, okay? But literally, people were going in my own fellowship. They were, like I'd said to him, a Piper LT. I was told for my stomach's sake that, um, yeah, cannabis is a good thing. And I'd started using cannabis daily, okay? Meanwhile, at the same time, I was in fellowship with the brethren and they were asking me how I was getting on. They were psychoanalyzing me. They were really, they were psychoanalyzing me. But a long story short, everything that they've done, everything that's happened, it can be read word for word in Psalm 38, Psalm 39, Psalm 41, and Psalm 52. Okay? Literally word for word. But for the better part of seven months, I was really destroyed. I was broken. I was literally, I, I don't know how to explain it, but I didn't even want to be here anymore. Do you know what I mean? And every time that fellowship with the Lord would pick back up, I would go back and I'd go, I would, I would watch one of their videos and it would put me straight back down to square one every single time. But there's other things that were happening. There was the one last fellowship that I had with Matthew Melanson, Alexander Hartley, Brad Ovenshine, and Justin Laird was there as well. Okay. And in this fellowship, everyone was speaking at the one time to me. They were they were all you had Alexander Hartley singing, Brad was reading scriptures, and then I had Matthew Melanson call me a hypocrite. Okay. And I don't deny that I was a hypocrite, I was a hypocrite. But they were all speaking at the one time and everything was really getting confusing. My head was in a major spin. I mean, a major spin. And whether anyone believes what happened next or not, it's completely up to you. But there was a voice and it spoke clear as day. And it said, you are being manipulated. Get out. I became very panicked when I heard that. I became really shaken. I was like, I said, brethren, I just need to go to my bed now. I just, I need to go away. And that was the last fellowship that I ever had with a lot of them. Okay. And for that better part of seven months, I was terrified. I'd started trying to think about the scriptures and I started opening up the scriptures. And the Lord showed me what a Pharisee was. And that really... I was in tears. I was almost pulling my own hair. I was like, Lord, this was never my intention. I'm so sorry. And I just wanted, ever since then, I wanted to turn from anger. I wanted to turn from it all. And things did get worse before they got better, brethren. Things got really worse before they got better. But I'd kept going back off of these things that I'd been taught. And I was still handing out gospel tracts for these individuals. And there was, whenever I was doing that, I'd be looking through the word and I was getting like, it was like the Lord was telling me through the scriptures, stop doing this. Okay. But a long story short, okay, because I'm not going to go into a lot of details because a lot of it doesn't glorify the Lord. Okay, but the Lord knows my foolishness, the Lord knows my sins, and thanks to my own foolishness, so do a lot of you. 
Okay. But if you turn your King James Bible first of all to Psalm 38, Lord, rebuke me not in thy wrath, neither chasten me in thy hot displeasure. For thine arrows stick fast in me, and thy hand presseth me sore. There is no soundness in my flesh because of thine anger, neither is there any rest in my bones because of my sin. For mine iniquities are gone over mine head. As a heavy burden, they are too heavy for me. My wounds stink and are corrupt because of my foolishness. I am troubled, I am bowed down greatly. I go mourning all the day long. For my loins are filled with a loathsome disease and there is no soundness in my flesh. I am feeble and sore broken. I have roared by reason of disquietness of my heart. Lord, all my desire is before thee, and my groaning is not hid from thee. My heart panteth, my strength faileth me. As for the light of mine eyes, it is also gone from me. My lovers and my friends stand aloof from my sower. My kinsmen stand afar off. They also that seek after my life lay snares for me. And they that seek my hurt speak mischievous things and imagine deceits all the day long. But I as a deaf man heard not, and I was as a dumb man opened not his mouth. Openeth not his mouth, sorry. Thus I was as a man that heareth not, and in whose mouth was no, are no reproofs. For in thee, O Lord, do I hope, thou will hear, O Lord my God. For I said, Hear me, lest otherwise they should rejoice over me. When my foot slippeth, they magnify themselves against me. If I am ready to halt, and my sorrow is continually before me. For I will declare mine iniquity, I will be sorry for my sin. But mine enemies are lively, and they are strong, and they that hate me wrongfully are multiplied. They also that render evil for good are mine adversaries, because I follow the thing that good is. Forsake me not, O Lord, O my God, be not far from me. Make haste to help me, O Lord, my salvation. Okay? Literally, it's almost like it's word for word. Okay? Literally. I really, see what I mean? And all I'd, it's hard to explain, it really is. But the more that I was, I kept crying over and over and over and over and over again. Lord, please forgive me. Lord, please forgive me. Lord, please forgive me. And that's what I was doing. Okay. And I'd go back, I'd try and go back to watching these videos and things were going back down to square one. That was literally the case. And then the next thing was Psalm 39. I said, I'll take heed to my ways that I sin not with my tongue. I'll keep my mouth in with the bit and bridle while the wicked is before me. I was done with silence. I held my peace. I held my peace even from good and my sorrow was stirred. My heart was hot within me while I was musing the fire burned. Then spake I with my tongue, Lord, make me to know mine end and the measure of my days, what it is, that I may know how frail I am. Behold, thou hast made my days as an handbreadth, and mine age is as nothing before thee. Verily, every man at his best state is altogether vanity, Sheila. Surely every man walketh in a vain show. Surely they are disquieted in vain. He heapeth up riches, and knoweth not who shall gather them. And now, Lord, what wait I for? My hope is in thee. Deliver me from all my transgressions. Make me not the reproach the foolish. I was dumb. I opened up my mouth because thou didst it. Remove thy stroke away from me. I am consumed by the blow of thine hand. When thou with rebukes dost correct man for iniquity, thou makest his beauty to consume away like a moth. Surely every man is vanity, Sheila. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and give ear unto my cry. Hold not thy peace at my tears, for I am a stranger with thee, and a sojourner is all my father's will. 
or spare me that I may recover strength before I go hence and be no more. Okay, and it's, I was in a lot of fear. Why was I in a lot of fear? Because of my ways, because of my sins. I was being used as an attack dog, okay? I deleted Skype. I deleted Skype because of it. And I just stopped fellowshipping with everyone because of it, okay? But the videos that people seen where I was calling people devils and things like that, okay? Not making excuses, it was sinful and it was wrong, okay? But I'm gonna say this. I had a bunch of supposed elders over the top of me and they were constantly bombarding me with these, oh, they, this individual needs to be rebuked, this individual needs to be rebuked, okay? Literally. And it was just after a while that, for example, one conversation that I can remember was a conversation between myself and Matt Melanson, okay, where they'd literally convinced me that a certain individual was a devil, okay. Tim Conan, they'd said, okay. They would say, I was convinced that man's a devil. You need to rebuke him, brother, the judge, and everything like that. And I was stupid enough to make the videos. I was stupid enough to make the videos. After a while, the Lord really began to show me through the scriptures what a Pharisee was, how a Pharisee acts. And I was one of them. I was one of them. And it broke my heart. It broke my heart. That was never my intention. I'd started attacking certain groups of individuals out there with my preaching videos. And as I was making those videos, my health was getting worse and worse. And there was there was an individual who I'd like to call a brother, okay? And he'd actually made a video about me at one point and he said, if you don't repent of this, I pray that the Lord shuts your wicked lying mouth. Okay? And although it seemed like strong words, the Lord heard that. There was a time where I'd, I got a big abscess at the back of my tooth, and that was only about a couple of days after that video was made. But the people that I was in fellowship with, I'm, I'm going forwards and backwards in time here, sorry about that. But the, the brethren at the time that I was in fellowship with, they would, they were, they'd seen this toothache of mine, they'd seen the pain I was in. And I'd said, I, I don't want to go to a doctor, I don't want to go to hospitals because those places are they're filled with Jesuits. And for three days, brethren, I was like, I couldn't even sleep on my couch or nothing. But like, I was praying to the Lord to take away the toothache. The Lord took away the toothache. The swelling went down within a couple of days. And I was a little bit shocked to see that those elders and all sorts that I was in fellowship with, you could see the disbelief in their face. It was really, it was really strange. But for my own health, I've always relied on the Lord. Always. But like I said, I'd started making these videos against certain groups of people. And in, in, in all that, once the Lord had pulled me aside, took me through the scriptures, and this was the, the chapter, okay? Um, where is it here? Just 
Just give me a second, I'll find the verse real quickly. Yeah. It was Revelation chapter 3, verse 3. Remember, therefore, how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou watch, shall not watch, shall not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know how I will come upon thee. Okay. Remember how thou hast received and heard. Okay. And to begin with, when I... When I first started believing the scriptures, it wasn't to do with Brian's ministry. Okay, Brian's ministry was the was the first ministry that I'd ever got any kind of understanding or anything like that from. Okay, but when I got saved, it was between me and the Lord. I was I was literally my on my deathbed. Okay, I was nineteen years old. The things that were happening at the time, my health was just going phew, right downhill. Okay, this is back in the year 2016 I'm talking about now. But my health was going right downhill because I was a lost man at the time. I'd abused my health with drugs, alcohol. I'd wasted everything. I was bedridden for almost six months. And it was, I was watching a few of Brian's videos at the time. But Brian wasn't there, okay? What happened was I, I prayed to the Lord just between me and the Lord. And I asked the Lord to save me, okay? And I lived joyfully for the better part of about a year. And I, and I started getting in fellowship with brethren from the, that ministry. And when I started getting fellowship with brethren from that ministry, I had I had other brethren as well. And I'd always notice that there was always these little strifes and contentions starting up, all with the people regarding Brian's ministry. Okay? Like an example, I used to be um I used to be in fellowship with a brother in Christ called Nicholas Laminac. Okay. And him and Tim Conn had an argument. Okay, and because of that, they brought it away. I got dragged into it as well, and everything started like that from then on out. And then it was just contention after contention after contention after contention after contention, and it really was weighing me down. No one in my life wanted to know me anymore. And meanwhile, all the time I was watching these common scenes of lost people videos and I was thinking oh well I must be doing something right do you know what I mean that was literally what was going on there and I thought like oh well if, if I'm hated then that must be a good thing but there's been hated for the right reasons and there's been hated for the wrong reasons okay but skipping f back to January there, when the Lord pulled me aside, he really showed me that everything that I was doing was wrong, okay? And not just that I was wrong on it, I was wrong for doing it as well. But then there was people above me who knew it all, okay? Like, I was often, like, literally, for example, Brad had made a video in Second Peter, and I'd went, th I'd done a few things in that, okay, and I'd said to Brad, I was like, could you go through this scripture for me? Is this for today? And he'd be like, hmm, he would like, you'd never get a straight answer, okay, but then he would convince you later on that it was for the Jews in the time of Jacob's trouble, okay, and at those, and at that, okay, like. It started making these videos where he would say, in my experience, that when I've seen someone who's bothered about this verse, it's because they're messed up in this sin here and this, and they would, and they would really study it through the scriptures. Okay? But then there came a point in time where they'd convinced me 
And still to this day, I don't know if it was real or not. Okay, I don't know whether it's truth or not. But they had hinted severely to me that my computer had been hacked. Okay. And Brad had said to me in a Skype call with Matthew Melanson there, this ought to be brought before the brethren. And that's why I made that video where I was foaming out my own shame. And then after I made that video, Brad uploads a video going, foaming out their own shame. It was setting me up constantly. It was setting me up and then constantly was doing it. Okay? It was making me believe I was doing a right thing. It made me believe I was doing well. Not just that. But they'd also tried to convince me that certain people out there were literal devils. Okay? Like, the conversation that I remember was, Brethren, do you think that maybe Bob is maybe not a devil-possessed man, but maybe an actual devil? And it's like, this is why I was so, this is why I didn't want to fellowship, okay, this is, I was really just, I'm not going to say that, oh, oh, it was all just them, because I was the one stupid enough to fall for it all, okay, and that's just the bottom line, and I started preaching more and more, and they're like, behind closed doors, they're like, amen, brother, amen, amen, even though they knew the sins that I'd had done, even though, right, they were like, hey, many men just encouraging me non-stop. I didn't know any better. Okay? I was relying on my elders to correct me if I was wrong. Okay? But then after a while, when we started doing these big, long, in-depth Bible studies, I started studying the, the word more and more between me and the Lord. And even though it was just, I wasn't teaching anything, okay? I was like, in fellowship, so I was like, could this be a possibility hearing the verses? And then the next thing I know, I'm being told that Matthew Landau is laughing about me behind my back. Like, literally mocking me. So, like, Brad had said, we're going to get you all on a call together, okay? And I was, okay, there was, in the call, there was myself, Matthew Melanson, Brad, and Matthew Landau. And they'd all organised it for about a week, and they said, look, we'll get these people into the call with you. And then when you're in the call, right, you and Matthew Landau, just talk it out, okay? They recorded the conversation, okay? But when it came to the point where me and Matthew Landau were supposed to have a talk, they all just got up and fled, okay? Just leaving me to deal with Matthew Landau alone, okay? I mean, that's not something an elder does. And in that, he lied right to my face. My elders weren't there to defend me. They weren't there to say, here, you've just lied to him, okay? Matthew Melanson, he was the one that Matthew Landau talked about me behind my back to, but yet... He didn't, he didn't, he wasn't there to, to, to provide the evidence. So Matthew Landau lied right to my face. There's nothing I could do about it. I just says, okay. And that was that. Do you know what I mean? And after then, Matthew Landau had tried to send me an email, which was a phishing attempt, Okay. Those of you who don't really know about phishing or things like that, it's um it's a computer term for someone sending a legitimate looking email that's got some script or code in it that's malicious, spyware or something like that. Okay. And I use the Proton Mail thing because it actually comes with a bit of free security. And they'd said, look, our systems have detected that this is a, a malware attempt. So I just blocked Matthew Landau and I didn't talk to him again for a while. 
Okay, I say for a while there because, like I said, the Lord had pointed out to me what a hypocrite I was, what an angry, wicked, filthy, disgusting bully I was. And not just that, but how I was using his word for it. And when the Lord does that and the Lord shows you that, it breaks you. It does break you, okay? And I'd really, I wonder, like, Lord, please help me. I don't want to be like this. But a long story short, I went on this, like, I'm still doing it to this day, like, where anyone that I've remotely offended in any way, I'm going back and I'm repenting to them and saying, look, I'm sorry about that. Do you know what I mean? And for a while, they they tried to convince me that that I'd said to someone to get the jab or something, which, like, I kept praying to the Lord about this. I really kept praying to the Lord about this. And there was a video out there that I'd watched, and it was really convincing me, really was convincing me that that, that they might have been right. But then I was like, hold on a minute, is this true? And I really, really couldn't for the life of me remember, brethren. Then after a while, there was two stories being told. A Justin Laird from Australia kept mailing me. Sash Lavrenshik kept mailing me. Okay, they kept saying, how's your walk with the Lord going? And I didn't even pick up on this at first. But they were intentionally trying to trip me up in things. Okay. And then it was after that thing where I was convinced that I'd basically caused someone to get that vaccine or something like that, that I just, I kept replying to people, like, I'm sorry for what a disgrace I've been to you all, for the, to the Lord, everything. But they kept still doing it time and time and time again. Time and time again, they kept doing it. Do you know what I mean? Kept, and then it was a few weeks later, Justin had actually just said to me at the blue, Oh, but you haven't taught anyone that. And then the lies began. I was like, okay, this is really strange now. And then after the, I watched a few videos to do with Brad. And again, I'm not being funny, but he is using some form of mind control people. Okay. Whether you believe it or don't, it's up to yourself. Okay. But. He is using a form of mind control. That's why I'm I'm a fair bit speaking about this subject. I tried making a live stream well back in December about it. Okay. And I was just that much of a mess, I took it down. I took it down. But then when the Lord began to show me that here, these might be actual tactics used by another group of people. And I'm not going to go mentioning that group of people because, quite frankly, everybody's probably sick of me saying that word. Okay? Jesuit. Okay? But they were that was the tactics they were using. Okay? Literally. And then, as time went on, like just going to maybe about last week now, it happened all again. It was always these cycles again and again and again. And whenever I tried to make videos, I'd noticed that it was always these individuals and they were coming back going, good to see you, amen. And they, they weren't being genuine about it. They were doing it to, to puff you up. Okay? They're intentionally puffing me up. Do you know what I mean? And at, at that point, I just started being very wary of all of them. And then it became the accusations that, oh, he's going crazy or something like that. And no, that wasn't the case. I was just being very weary, okay? Because because long story short, I don't know how like people, I don't know if you will believe this or not, but the Lord literally does speak through his word, okay? The Lord speaks through his word, okay? It's strange. But sometimes you can have something happen in your life and you'll open up the word and it's there in your face, you know what I mean? 
Hi, John. Like, it was right there, do you know what I mean? And that's what was happening with me a lot. The Lord was speaking through his word, and thy brethren are deceiving thee, do you know what I mean, Jeremiah 12, okay? And from the, those things that kept happening, the more and more that I tried to fellowship with them, things in my own life were going bad, real bad, okay? My mum got diagnosed with cancer as well, and she's, she's literally spent the last while of her life kind of still playing bad things, okay? My dad's health was getting worse. My health was getting worse. It was literally, like, I don't know how to explain it, but it was almost like God was chasing me to death, Okay? And it was one time I was in prayer and I was asking the Lord again to forgive me. And these were the verses that I kept being shown, okay? Isaiah chapter 50, verse 1, okay? Thus saith the Lord, where is the bill of your mother's divorcement, whom I have put away, or which of my creditors is it to whom I have sold you? Behold, for your iniquities you have sold yourselves, and for your transgression is your mother put away, Okay? These were the verses I kept being shown time and time again. And I'd kept going, I kept watching Brad's videos and he'd gone over this verse a few times going, and one of these videos I thought was directed towards myself. It was going, your mother, you know, the mother of harlots and abominations, mystery Babylon the Great. And I was, I was always scratching my head saying, I'm not a Catholic, this doesn't make any sense. And in prayer with the Lord, I was like, Lord, I was like, I've never been a Catholic or anything like that. Do you know what I mean? There was one time where I was moved to a Catholic primary school when I was a child, okay? But that was only because I was bullied at my first school and I wasn't there very long, okay? Not there very long at all. It was like from primary four to primary seven, that was it, three years, okay? After that, I got high school, okay? And before anyone asks, I went to a non-religious high school, okay? When I was little, I wasn't born into a religious family or anything like that, okay? I was just, when I was little, I was a lost atheist, okay? But these were the verses the Lord kept showing me, and things weren't making sense. I was like... But a long story short, I was still handing out gospel tracts. I don't... Um, I'll see if I have any on my bookshelf, just here a second, so I can show. But, um... Where are they? Um. But I was still handing out these, okay? And every time that I handed out one of these, I would get the verse, the verses about those that put their children through the fire. And then things really began to click then. Okay, like I said, like, do you know what I mean? Like I said, I do wholeheartedly believe that God speaks through his word, okay? The Lord will tell you what you need to know through his word, okay? If you'd like to see evidence of that, that video that I uploaded about the, the other individual, okay? I want to move on from that, so I'm not going to go mentioning their names anymore, Okay? I literally say I forgive them. I want to move on and just do readings in the word and that'll be it. Preach the word. Preach the death, burial, and resurrection of my Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Okay? And that's all I want to do. But like, on that video, every single verse that I used in that video, the Lord did show me, like I said, like how God speaks through his word. And meanwhile, I was being accused of using soothsaying and accused of being using witchcraft. And no, all I was doing is opening the word and praying to the Lord and believing everything I read. Word for word. Do you know what I mean? But after that while, that especially when the, my words started being twisted, and then it was in the person's individual salvation message that had left me 
where they had given the description of the word soothsayer from the book called The Principles of the Jesuits. And I was like, why is that in a salvation? Why is that in a salvation message thing and a text message kind of? And then Isaiah 50, it all began to click. Pharisees, okay, like um, if you do a simple Google Wikipedia on these on that group of individuals, you'll see that they actually based themselves off of the Pharisees, okay? But going back maybe about two or three weeks now, I really believe the Lord firmly put it in my heart to go watch David Daniels, okay? To begin with, I didn't really like David Daniels very much because I was always edgy about people who never exposed a certain group of individuals. If someone didn't mention that evil group of people, I wouldn't trust them. Okay? But Lord had said, why, why didn't you, like, not said, but, you know what I mean, put it in my heart to, to watch David Daniels. And I seen he uploaded a four-part series. And I uploaded, and I uploaded, I watched that four-part series, and it was on the Jesuits, about a, a young man called Jacopo Leone. And... Even then, when I was watching that, everything was hitting home so hard. Do you know what I mean? Like, especially in the first video that David Daniels made, where he was going over this Jacopo Leone story on how when he was he was knowingly going into the Jesuit order and they were constantly psychoanalyzing him. Much like Brad, Matthew Melanson and his wife, Matthew Landau, were doing with me. Okay. Meanwhile, all I was doing was sitting on my knees, crying my heart out non-stop. Do you know what I mean? That is literally. And it was when seeing that video as well that everything was started piecing together little by little. I should have checked tracks, but they have a lot of good reviews. Amen, but like at, this, at the same time, no one in this earth can be perfect, you know what I mean? Like, check tracks are guaranteed not to be writing everything, but neither am I. I'm not writing anything, everything, you know what I mean? There's people out there that, do you know what I mean? Like, not one of us are perfect. But like, um, back to what I was saying there, is that they were psychoanalyzing me and everything was starting to piece together from what the Lord was showing me in his word, what I'd learned from David Daniel's videos. And the last piece of the puzzle was the way the brethren, or again, sorry, Lord, but the way that the people were treating me, they were, they were lying and wait, they were setting snares. I mean, these funnily worded little questions that, if they didn't get the right answer or their answer that they were looking for, or they weren't looking for a right answer, they were looking for you to deliberately say the wrong answer so they could accuse you. The Lord again had me going through the word. Who does that? It's the Pharisees. You know, those that are based after, you know what I mean? That that wicked order that based themselves after the Pharisees and things like that. Do you know what I mean? At that point. Do you know what I mean? You're either, when the Lord shows you all these things, if you continue in them, then you're without excuse. So I have to wash my hands of them. I have to. It's, like I said before, it's my Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, whom I serve. Okay? That's it. And the more and more I kept saying to these brethren, my life's changed now, things are getting better, they wouldn't respond to that. Okay? And then last night I was doing a little bit of research with... Yeah, I do agree with that as well, John, yeah. Definitely, like... The, the graven image that they have on their tracks, I don't agree with them either. 
Like, um, I still think I have one of them here, actually. Um, just give me a second. Yeah, like, um, these ones, like, yeah, I didn't agree with a lot of their graven images either. But, like, um, but like I was saying there, like, the, not the graven images, but a long story short, I was literally being psychoanalyzed nonstop. And at this point, when Lord shows you all of this stuff that's going on, if I continue to be a if I continue to be a partaker with them, I was gonna get what they also deserved. Okay, the Lord was halfway chastening me to death. Okay, literally, and there's like a lot of things that started to happen in my life, a lot of like supernatural events. Okay, now the just shall live by faith. Yes. Paul lived by faith. Paul also heard the Holy Ghost. Okay. These people that say that there's absolutely there's absolutely nothing out there that's gonna no no if the Lord needs you to know something, he'll let you know it. Okay. There's been a few times in my life where I've been in very present danger. Very present danger. And the Lord doesn't mess about then at that point. Okay, it will give you an audible instruction. Like I said, in the fellowship that I had with Brad and Alexander Hartley and Matthew Melanson, the very last fellowship I was in, they were all speaking at the one time to me. They were all talking at the one time, and I was, for some reason, I was trying to listen to them all. And it was making my head just go round and round and round and round. And out of the blue of the Lord, I just heard a voice, and I'm sure it was the Lord. He turned around and said, you are being manipulated. Get out. That was the last time I had fellowship with them back in January. That was. But since then, do you know what I mean? The Lord started strengthening me in his word. It took him a lot of time. Okay. It really took him a long time to, to give me any kind of strength or boldness back. Like, and that's why, that's why, um, yeah, but that's, that's where it went away. And it's, it's not something I'm too open about talking about to be honest because i'm gonna I have to talk about this one openly okay and this is why okay but a long story short threats of being suicided okay there was a video that brian had put out going what you're going to turn against me now you little tyrant and then there was other videos where he'd uploaded just after that one going well, you get this all the time that truthers they end up going missing, they get suicided. And this was every time that I tried to make a video explaining these certain situations. Okay, that these people were coming to these videos, and then another one, Brad would use the scriptures to do it. Make not thyself over wise. Why should this thou die before thy time? And you look between the lines, okay? Like it was his video was directed towards me exposing him and the Jesuit order. Like, do you remember the, the videos that I'd made before where I'd, I was talking about how the militancy and violence, um, that's a technique of, of those guys, okay? I made these, um, like when people, we all had the problems with the check tracks. So I'll, I made these one little versions here. Do you know what I mean? Like, 
So like I, hand, I used to hand those out and warn people about certain evils and things like that. Okay. Yeah. It was some odd behaviour. Do you know what I mean? Like, but the Lord really, he gave me strength and comfort. Okay. And it was at that point, like the Revelation 3, do you know what I mean? Remember how thou hast heard and repent. Revelation chapter 3, verse 3. Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. And I remembered my brokenness in the Lord. Where I was, when I'd first called upon the Lord, okay? When I first received faith in Jesus Christ, I was at death's door. Do you know what I mean? And the Lord almost had to bring me back to that point. I was I was being a wicked hypocrite. I was being a bully. I was I was being really, really wicked. And all I can say is how the Lord had mercy for me or why he had mercy for me, I really don't know other than the fact that he's good. Do you know what I mean? The Lord could have just killed me and sent me to hell. The Lord could have done anything like that. Okay? The Lord could have the Lord could have brought these wicked people into my actual life and used them to kill me. The Lord, do you know what I mean? But instead he, he, just, he broke me and he gave me his truth. And that's the next part I'm going to talk about here. Psalm 41 and Psalm 52. Okay. Blessed is he that considereth the poor. The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive. He shall be blessed upon the earth, and thou will not suffer to thou will not deliver him into the will of his enemies. The Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of languishing. Thou will make all his bed in his sickness. I said, Lord, be merciful unto me, heal my soul, for I have sinned against thee. Mine enemies speak evil of me. When shall I die and his name perish? And I didn't realise that at the time, but my enemies who were speaking evil of me, I was calling them brethren. And if he come to see me, he speaketh vanity. Like I've often said now in my videos about my stomach issues and things, I've got an inflamed stomach, like... Right now, I stand at the weight of 49 kilos, okay? Like, the Lord helped me to eat yesterday, praise his holy name, and the Lord helped me to eat at breakfast this morning, praise his holy name. But I was in fellowship, when I was back in fellowship with those who I used to call brethren, like Matthew Landau, for example. I would be in calls with him, and sometimes I'd be really ill in my calls. And he'd be like, how are you doing today, brother judge? And I was like, I'm not doing too well, but still praise the Lord, I've not been able to eat. And meanwhile, he was showing me these big jars of these mushrooms and everything that he'd picked and all of this. And if he come to see me, he speaketh vanity. His heart gathereth iniquity to itself. When he goeth abroad, he telleth it. And then again, the next part of what the brethren were doing, well, not the brethren, but those who I was calling brethren, all that hate me, whisper together against me. Against me do they devise my hut. An evil disease, say they, cleaveth fast unto him. And now that he lieth, he shall rise up no more. Verse 9. Yea, mine own familiar friend, in whom I trusted, which did eat of my bread, hath lifted up his heel against me. But thou, O Lord, be merciful unto me, and raise me up that I may requite them. By this I know that thou favourest me, because mine enemy doth not triumph over me. As for me, thou upholdest me in mine integrity, and settest me before thy face forever. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel from everlasting to everlasting. Amen and amen. And like I said, it's almost word for word again. Do you know what I mean? 
Then there was Sam 52, and this one the Lord showed me last night. Okay. And it's it literally is a case. They've all they've all done this. They've all they they make mischief up, they they devise deceits. Do you know what I mean? They convince, they turn people against people. Psalm 52, verse 1 through 9. Why boastest thou thyself in mischief, O mighty man? The goodness of God endureth continually. The tongue deviseth mischief like a sharp razor, working deceitfully. Thou lovest evil more than good, and lying than to speak righteousness, you lie. Thou lovest all devouring words, O thou, thou deceitful tongue. God shall likewise destroy thee forever. He shall take thee away and pluck thee out of thy dwelling place and root thee out of the land of the living, Selah. The righteous also shall see and fear and shall laugh at him. Lo, this is the man that made not God his strength, but trusted in the abundance of his riches. Okay. I'm not going to go mentioning his name by this point, okay? Like, everybody knows who he is. He is him who maketh himself famous by cutting down a tree. Okay? If you don't know what I'm referencing there, it's Psalm 74. Psalm 74. Um... Psalm 74, verse 5. A man was famous according as he'd lifted up axes upon thick trees. Okay. But these people, they, they delight in their abundance of riches. Do you know what I mean? They're not strengthening themselves in the Lord. But I'm like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. I'll praise thee forever because thou hast done it. I'll wait in thy name for it is good before thy saints. And this is something else the Lord had used as well. That David was in the Old Testament, okay? Now, we all know here that the Old Testament is under the law. So according to the law, what should have happened to David after he took you, after he killed Uriah the Hittite's wife, um, not his wife, after he killed Uriah the Hittite and then took his wife, what should have happened to David? According to the law, he should have been stoned. But God, who is rich in mercy, see, God God made a separate covenant altogether with David, a, David, um, a covenant which he promised that he would never take his mercies from him. Okay? And that covenant stretches right on to today, okay? Because obviously of the lineage of David, because David was of the, the thing of the, the, the house of Judah, that the Lord Jesus Christ came to be born through that lineage. So those of us who are saved and in the Lord Jesus Christ, we're of the household of David, we're of the lineage of David. God doesn't take his mercies away from us. And that's that's something amazing as well. That even though even though David was under the law, look at how many times he praises the Lord for his merciful kindness. Look at how many times David says, Trust in the Lord. You know what I mean? It's as simple as that. Literally, like Repentance toward God, faith toward the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? And what that repentance is, it is brokenness. Okay? But someone can't make themselves broken. Do you know what I mean? The, the Lord does it. Do you know what I mean? The Lord will bring situations into your life that will break you. Do you know what I mean? Health problems, I mean, when you look at through all the scriptures, I mean, the Pharisees love to do this as well. They love to talk about who's qualified to speak the word and who's not. I mean, this is a picture that I'd seen on the, the Facebook this morning on one of the KGV groups I'm a part of. But when you look at the full scripture, 
Abraham was too old. Okay. Moses was a murderer. Apostle Paul, he headed the stoning of Stephen. David, a murderer and an adulterer. Do you know what I mean? The Lord uses some unworthy people at times, does he not? Because we were never worthy. It's never about us. It's about the Lord Jesus Christ. It's about his mercies and his grace. It's about a relationship with him one-on-one. -on -one. Do you know what I mean? Not respecting the words of man, not respecting the words of your peers. It's about having a relationship with the Lord. I mean, if you seek, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then all these things shall be added unto you. Do you know what I mean? And and the main point of this video is trust in the Lord. You know what I mean? Make him your number one and see how life changes. That's that's all I really have to say. But, anyways, um, oh, there's a lot of comments here. Praise the Lord. Yeah, yeah that's true enough as well. Do you know what I mean? Like John 13, 18, that you've got there, John, do you know what I mean? The, I'm not going to go as say that the Lord chooses certain people I'm not saying that okay when the Lord breaks someone he'll bring some situations into their life okay like if someone's looking for the truth and the devil is trying to deceive them with a lie but that person is honestly searching for the truth with their whole heart you think the Lord's going to let them believe a lie no the Lord will show them the truth do you know what I mean and again when you look when you look at the life that the Lord himself lived, he was rejected of the scribes, the Pharisees and the elders. Do you know what I mean? He was a man of sorrows acquainted with grief. Do you know what I mean? These are, that's the fellowship of the spirit. Do you know what I mean? No, I don't sit here, any, any brethren wants to watch this, I don't sit here I don't claim to be a teacher. I don't claim to be anything like that. I'm a sinner saved by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's it. He has shown us the mercy he had for David when he believed the gospel. Amen to that. And there's Psalm 89 as well. Um, it really talks about how the Lord would deal with David. Um, Psalm 89 verse 20 through, through 33. I have found David my servant, with my holy oil have I anointed him. With whom my hand shall be established, mine arm also shall strengthen him. The enemy shall not exact upon him, nor the son of wickedness afflict him. I will beat down his foes before his face and plague them that hate him. But my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him. And in my name shall his horn be exalted. I will set his hand also in the sea and his right hand in the rivers. He shall cry unto me, Thou art my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. Also will I make him my firstborn, like see like uh, the, the lineage of the Lord Jesus Christ there. I will also make him my firstborn, higher than the kings of the earth. My mercy will I keep for him forevermore, and my covenant shall stand fast with him. Okay, like um unto verse 33, I said sorry. His seed also will I make to endure forever, and his throne as the days of heaven. If his children forsake my law and walk not in my judgments, if they break my statutes and keep not my commandments. Then will I visit their transgression with the rod, 
and their iniquity with the stripes. Nevertheless, my loving kindness will not I not utterly take from him, nor suffer my faithfulness to fail. And again, that's what happened with me. Okay? Literally over these past few months. When you read the end to the end of that chapter, okay, that's the example of the chastening that you'll get from the Lord if you do wickedly in his sight. Okay. Like the Lord doesn't stand for those who are saved doing wickedly, you know, being, being oppressive, being hypocritical, being bullies, like I was doing. The Lord won't stand for it. Do you know what I mean? There's, do you know what I mean? There's, there's actually chastens I could show, okay? Like, literally, like, if I was to show my back, do you know what I mean? It's, it's, covered, in, it's covered in spots and all sorts, and, do you know what I mean? I had I had enemies to rejoice over me. I had I used to walk to my local shops and I even got stared out at one point. Do you know what I mean? I tried witnessing to a bunch of people that were waiting at the bus stop and they started laughing and shouting. I'm not gonna shout what they said because it's a wicked blast for me. But when someone does wickedly and for saved in the sight of the Lord, what will happen? Is verse, do you know what I mean? Like how it says here in verse 32, then will I visit their transgression with the rod and their iniquity with stripes. Okay, and when you compare that with, it might take me a little while to get this verse here, so I apologize. Second Samuel chapter 7. Yeah. It's Second Samuel chapter 7, verse 14. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. Okay? And when you compare that again with Psalm 89, verse 42. There was set up the right hand of his adversaries. There was made all his enemies to rejoice. And... When I was going through the chasing that the Lord was getting me through and praise his holy name for it, my enemies were rejoicing over me. My enemies were literally walking all over the top of me. Those that hate me, they were they were oppressing me on a daily basis. Even there was things going on even in my neighborhood, which were a, just a complete vexation in my life. But at the end of it, when the Lord pulls you through it and you give him thanks, you know why he's done it. You know why in faithfulness he's afflicted me. Do you know what I mean? And his name is to be praised forever. That's another really good point, John. David did sins that normally resulted in execution. No animal sacrifices could cover David's sins, but God had mercy for him. Amen. Wages of sin is death, Romans 6.21-23. And God has showed us that same mercy. Amen. If God was to give us what we deserve, we would drip down to the pit of hell in a lickety split. Mm -hmm. As fast as a bullet, and God showed us the sure mercies of David. Amen there, John. Yeah. That is exactly true. But that's, that's the whole point of this video, do you know what I mean? That we we don't deserve heaven. We don't. Do you mean, even in my own prayers of the Lord, I'm like, Lord, I'm not even worthy of your grace. Do you know what I mean? Romans 3.9, this is what I said in the other video, Romans 3.9. We should all surround our own lives with this verse. Do you know what I mean? I love this verse. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's a verse that helps keep the pride down. Romans chapter 3, verse 9. What then? Are we better than they? No, and no wise. For before proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin. Even I even say about it, those that have lied and they've 
twisted things about me and they've they've attacked me behind my back like those people have made that video about a couple of days ago. And even again last night, I was in prayer with the Lord. I was like, Lord, please don't do to them, Lord, what you've done to me. Please don't do that, Lord. Do you know what I mean? Lord, save them gently if possible. Do you know what I mean? I know that that's not the way things work, but... I mean, I'm no better than them. Do you know what I mean? I was one of the worst. And this is the one thing I was getting really annoyed about. And I will call them a cult because that's what they are. Back when I was an angry, rotten, wicked, double-tongued, double-living hypocrite, they were all, amen, brother, amen, 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 amen. But when the Lord gives you the truth and he shows you how wicked you are, like how wicked I was, sorry, do you know what I mean? I just wanted to turn from that wickedness and then all of a sudden they start, do you know what I mean? Like, oh, we can't trust them anymore and like, what? Do you know what I mean? And if that's the case, then I don't really want anything to do with those people. The Lord is my shepherd. But anyways, I hope someone gets an edification from this. I hope this, I hope this may be used for the Lord's glory in one way or another, okay? And with all that said and done, brethren, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen.